Great Western Trail Argentina. This game is a sequel to Great Western Trail and like its progenitor it has the idea of being a rondel game in which the rondel has been expanded to become a large loop that the players markers travel on. So here we are gonna travel around Argentina with our cattle on the and we're gonna along the way we're going to help farmers so we're gonna recruit people to build buildings so we uh, invest in the railway we appoint people as station masters but ultimately we're going to Buenos Aires to uh, ship our cattle to Europe and from time to time we also sneak some extra grain on those ships to make extra money. And the reason why we do all this is the most noble reason of them all. We want to score more victory points than the opponent. So, each player has a personal display like the one that you see here with a lot of wooden discs on it at the beginning of the game and they're covering icons that you'll be able to uh, make use of when you remove the discs and basically there are actions to remove the disc from here, place them somewhere else and think of this as a reward that you get to modify your personal board, unlocking new actions and or uh, improving actions that are already there. Then during the game we will also hire people, when we get a tile we'll place in the corresponding area, so we're gonna uh, hire gauchos, uh, carpenters, maquinistas, uh, and farmers, and we can place those tiles there, triggering effects as we cover those spaces. Also, if you cover enough of those spaces, you'll score with three points at the end of the game. When you move on the rondel that is on the trail, you'll move a certain number of spaces, as indicated there, which can be increased by removing those discs again. We have uh, permanent cer uh, um, temporary certificates. Simply when you collect these and then you spend them, you will make your sales of cattle in Buenos Aires more valuable. And grain, super important because you need to feed your cows as you ship them to Europe. And again, also if you have enough, then you can sell it independently to those European markets. And then we also have those tiles. These tiles here representing buildings that you can build during the game. Uh, that tells you the number of carpenters that you need, remember from the board. That indicates also victory points and an action that you score when your marker lands on it. You can activate that action when your marker lands on it. Also this hand here, there are two kinds of hand symbols on the board, the black and green ones. And they represent the cost that people have to pay when they end their movement on a space or when they move through that space and that changes depending on the number of players. This style here incidentally is very neat and again it indicates different values, there are different tiles for different numbers of players. Now I have the game set up for two players. And you have also a deck of cards. There is an element of deck building and hand management for sure because when you reach Buenos Aires, the hands, the cards that you have in your hand they represent the cattle that you will be selling. And you can use only one cattle per kind. So you have the white, the black, and the green. My total value, if I was in Buenos Aires right, right now, would be six because it's useless to have two of the same kind. So really you want to build your deck and then manage your hand so you get to, to Buenos Aires with a nice hand of cards to sell. As for the main board, uh, here it is, and the main board really does not exhaust the whole play area. This is a game that takes quite a bit of real estate because of course each player will have a display like the one that I just showed you, like that one. Plus you have the board, plus you have three boards for the European markets, plus you need a, a row of cards for the market of cows that people can buy during the game, plus ships, tiles that represent the ships that we're going to use to send, uh, to send our cattle to Europe, plus bags that we use to draw tiles representing workers that are available randomly plus objective cards, so there's there's a lot, there's a lot going on around the board here. 
And there's a lot going on in general, which is remarkable when you realize that this is a game, this is a game that adds a lot of complexity over a very simple idea, the worker placement slash rondel idea, which is move your marker a number of spaces, boom, and do the action indicated on the space. That should be pretty easy. Again, that idea is easy, but then a lot of stuff happens because you have a lot of actions and a lot of unique effects and a lot of icons. This is definitely a fairly heavy game. So, you will move a certain number. When it's your turn, you will move your marker and then resolve the action of the space that you landed on. The number of steps that you can move is uh, the number that they showed you at the beginning with two players is three steps at the beginning and uh, the only spaces that count as a step are the ones that actually have something on them so moving from the beginning one two and then i could actually go all the way to that tile there three as a single action you can also as you can see there are tiles representing local farmers that are there needing help and each will count as a as a step if you were gonna go there so that would be quite a commitment if i took that path again it's a it's a rondelle with some choose your own adventure bifurcations and sometimes you can choose where to go these farmers have hand symbols so remember you have to pay when you when you pass uh, through that space or land on it, but only if you have money. They're very nice. They don't they don't ask you for money if you don't have any. That's an interesting twist. They also have a number printed on them with a symbol indicating tools. You may have tools that are visible on your personal board if you remove those wooden discs and reveal them. You can also uh, produce tools by playing cards from hand. So when you land on a space, you can choose to help the farmer. If you produce enough tools between the ones on your board and the ones on your on your on your cards that you reveal, then you collect the farmer, and then you can choose to either store the farmer next to your board, or you can choose to place it on your board in that line of slots that I showed you earlier. And that's how we held those farmers. We are we're nice now. Going about the board, you will see that there are just different actions. For example, uh, here we get to move um, our our train a number of space equal to the machinistas that we have on our on our board. Here we get to take a secondary action from our board. Those that again mainly will be unlocked during the game. Since we're talking about the train, there is a train track up there. Each player has a nice choo-choo train there. You move them on that track, and then when you reach, when you get close to those stations, you can place the train next to it. Then, if you have a worker on your board, you can choose to assign the worker to become the station master. You place it there, you will collect a reward, and you take that tile. These tiles, uh, those station tiles, will give you a benefit immediately, the one on top and then ways to score at the end of the game. This one, for example, will give you will give you grain and points for people that you collected, uh, permanent certificates, so we'll see what that is, and so on and so forth. So that's, uh, that's the big thing for the train. While you move it, you move it to collect the rewards. Also, if your train has passed a certain spot and Buenos Aires is up there in the corner, again, ultimately you always end your trip there and then you start at the beginning. You can also, if your train passes a certain spot, you can go to Buenos Aires and take a shortcut. See those red arrows there? There's another one there. Suppose that my train is in position 10, then when I reach this place, I don't have to go through these other spaces. I can just choose to go there and straight to Buenos Aires. So that's another advantage of having built the train. Other actions. Uh, this card allows me to collect an objective card uh, which will be great if I can finish it. I complete it, fulfill the requirements and I'll score victory points. Also again one of those secondary actions and then I get a I get to move my train. I get to hire people. Uh, here I could discard a card, a cow, white cow value 2 and then I can hire a person for the regular cost indicated on the board and another one for the extra cost, for an extra cost of two. 
they those stocks I bought from this market here as you can see the value will change because depending on the row where they are if they become more expensive if they have a symbol like that they cost an extra one this market also represents the timer for the game every time somebody goes to Buenos Aires tiles will be added here and as they're added they push down the marker when the marker leaves this track that triggers the end of the game um, all players but the one who triggered the end of the game take a turn takes a turn and then the game is over buying cattle that's the action that you do on that space and that will depend on the number of gauchos that you have on your board those are let me find one what is a gaucho when you need one there it is depending on how many you have on your board you can use your services for example with with one if you have only one you can buy a orange card orange cattle card level one for four or a level three for five and if you have more suppose i have three those gauchos are fungible i can use my three gauchos to perform this purchase action which is to buy two level three cards for five or i could do two and one so different combinations if you have a lot and this is the market of cards that are drawn randomly from a deck and you want to place them in order and by group so it's easier that way building buildings we already mentioned that action because that's that's what the carpenters are for so so these are some of the general things that you do and remember what you're trying to do to score points what do we do to do that we bring cattle to buenos aires when you get to Buenos Aires, the turn the, the turn that you <laughs> in which you get there, uh, you got a couple of steps to go through. First, uh, you get the option of selling grain to Europe. Complicated. I'm not going to explain it later. It's very easy, but if you don't know the other par parts, it seems confusing. The main idea is that you're going to sell cattle for your from your hand. I told you already how you do it, and you can add those personal certificates. Uh, those uh, to increase the value you collect money I say I raise the value of eight then I collect eight coins and I discard my hand then I get to take a disc from my board and to place it on one of these ships here these ships that are leaving for for Europe and I can place it on a ship where I haven't placed one already if this is the case, I cannot place one on a seven again. So it needs to be one where I don't have one yet. And it has to be a value, the ship, equal to or lower than the value produced with my hand. I sold card, I sold cattle for six, for example. I could place it on any of these ones. And that will affect several things, including where, where they go. But I also need to pay the grain to make sure that my cows are fed during during the trip if i don't have enough grain i can pay money and i have the money because i just got paid so that's for that part there where we place the this there and then finally we get to place these people the farmers will go on the board giving people opportunities to help them but also possibly asking for payment and these are the workers go and the workers the workers go down here on this board remember pushing down the victory uh the end of the game marker the these ships at some point as the game progresses will leave and so the marks on them will be placed on the european boards on the european boards and we got one for Havre, one for liverpool and one for rotterdam up there and if when one of my discs that was placed on a ship reaches a place i place it there or there depending on what the ship says now I can explain to you that action of the extra of selling grain in Europe because then if I'm in, in uh, Buenos Aires and I have a this there, if I pay enough grain as indicated from uh, in these areas here, then I can place one of my markers from the harbor to that area. Suppose that I'm in Buenos Aires and... Uh, and I already have a disc there because I'm blue and I decide to spend six grain then I can place this marker there lay and collect 
12 coins and score three victory points at the end of the game. And maybe my my friendly opponent later uh, goes to Buenos Aires and with the action of selling grain in Europe, decides to spend the one grain and places that one there, for example. This is the idea, and I know it's a lot, and I haven't even really scratched the surface and gotten into all the nitty-gritty details. It is a complicated game around the very simple idea of move on the rondelle a number of steps and take the action of the place where you land. This game is quite the beast to learn and to play, definitely it's the first time you're gonna have to check those rules, those icons, those little procedures, and the rule book, I guess, could do a better job in teaching the game. Uh, there could be a table of content, for example, so I can reference specific parts of the rule book instead of trying to remember where the rules are, the phrasing sometimes, uh, reveal the cards, and then only later says, at the end, discard the card. That sort of thing. Uh, and it's just a big block of text. Everything is buried in text because everything is in a small text. So it's going to be a process. It's going to be a process. And if you played the, the previous Great Western Trail, well, you still have to, to start from the beginning pretty much. Don't take things for granted. Now, uh, and I also the production, something, some of the colors of the icons could be different uh, from, from one another. It looks great from the look. There are just little elements there, so many icons and sometimes small icons that uh, I feel that it could have been done in a way that still looked great, but also was a little more playable. Once all of your players have put in the work of figuring out what the icons are and the effects, then the game moves surprisingly fast because ultimately your turn is, well, I'm going to move here and I'm going to collect two grains and I'm going to go here and I'm going to build a that building. I probably planned ahead I was going to do that. So here's the coin. I had the carpenter, so I can do that. Also, we call them the Marcos, the carpenter, because people say that they kind of look like me. So that's funny. So, uh... Turns are going to be fast. There may be a little bit of hesitation there because there are so many paths to victory and so many things that you want to do that, um, that, that there may be a little bit of analysis paralysis. Um, and know your players, know yourself. Now, I play the game only with two players and I like it this way. I think it's a great game in that format. I didn't feel the need, oh man, if we had like th three or four, we would more stuff will be going on. There is little, little direct interaction. Yes, I'm stopping on a place and I'm giving you a coin, but um, with more players, more people are stopping on my place and giving me coins, and I'm stopping on more people's places and giving them coins. I don't feel that that would add a lot. So, of course, if you have four friends that want to play, that's perfect. Well, you and three friends. But I think two had just the perfect balance of, uh, well, we are... of taking my actions uh, and planning while my opponent uh, is taking his and then back to me. Um, and it just feels that it works the way there wasn't any uh, too much waiting. I'd be worried with like four players if there's going to be downtime. But again, gameplay itself, if you and your group don't create the downtime, is really impressive because you have those nice, tough, decisions that you have to make because everything is possible you can do everything but uh, it takes planning and you have to chain uh, effects in a certain way you got to collect this and collect that to do this and to do that you have a whole mini or not so many deck building game and hand management game in, in which you're trying to uh, use the effects of your cars discard them for money discard them to help the farmers on the board so that you can reach the end of the loop with a, a nice set. You can collect a lot of money. You can place your disc on a good ship that will give you, will get you to the city where then you can take control of a certain area, which will allow you to maybe complete a certain objective. Everything actually works together. All these wheels within wheels are connected very well. I'm just I was just surprised by how smooth it was. As you see, if I describe you all the steps from like collecting uh, collecting a sack of grain 
to then placing a, a desk in a certain quarter in Rotterdam and, and completing an objective. It feels long, and it even is long, but it feels smooth, and so it's a real pleasure to see that uh, the strategy that you had to plan across the board uh, to then finally come to fruition. There's a nice sense of acceleration. I like that very much in games. I don't like rinse and repeat. I don't like to do the same thing uh, over and over again. But here, as the ships sail to go to those cities, then the remaining ships become more expensive. So it challenges you to, again, work with your deck in your hand to make sure that you're able uh, to load anything on a ship to have enough income from that. Uh, your effects become better, your your trains are, are uh, racing on the track. That's a very important part of the game. Do not uh, underestimate that because you score points as you become a station master and you collect those tiles that will allow you to score more points at the end. So there may be a little bit of a tug of war there, but if everybody's aware of how powerful that is, that's interesting also. But then there are other actions that also can pay off quite a bit. So it feels like the multiple things that you do are all good. They're just advantages and getting a lot of good cattle if you invest on those, on those gauchos, uh, racing on the, on the railway if you get the machinistas, uh, building stuff with your markers, and so on and so forth. Many paths to victory, very satisfying, complex, but rewarding gameplay. It's a Euro game on the heavier side of things, but one that if you put in enough work to learn it, uh, is one that is very rewarding and very fun. Also, I like that it not overstates welcome. Uh, it just ends uh, where I feel it peaks, which is great.